Riken poisoning derived from the castor oil plant Racinus communis, represents a grave public health concern due to the toxin's potency and the ease of extraction. Historically utilized in targeted assassinations and rumored as a warfare agent, the relevance of understanding the nature, mechanisms, and outcomes of ricin exposure has never been more critical, especially in today's context where bioterrorism threats loom. Ricin's capability to inflict harm upon entry into the human body through various routes, ingestion, inhalation, or injection, accentuates the urgency in comprehending the severity of ricin poisoning and its symptoms. The high mortality rates and the scarcity of a specific antidote further highlight the critical nature of understanding this potent toxin. What is ricin? Ricin is a highly potent toxin naturally found in the seeds of the castor oil plant, Racinus communis. The toxin can be extracted from the waste material left after processing the seeds for castor oil. Ricin is a rebosome inactivating protein that disrupts protein synthesis within cells, leading to cell death and potentially systemic organ failure. The ricin toxin is structured with a precise arrangement that enhances its binding efficiency and disrupts cellular functions which has been elucidated in recent molecular studies. Ricin toxin consists of two protein chains, A and B, linked by a disulfide bond. The A chain is responsible for inactivating ribosomes, thereby halting protein synthesis, while the B chain facilitates the entry of the toxin into cells by binding to cell surface carbohydrates. This dual action makes ricin exceptionally lethal, with the A-chain capable of inactivating up to 2,000 ribosomes per minute. Studies indicate that the B-chain's high affinity for cellular carbohydrates significantly enhances the delivery of the A-chain, which inactivates ribosomes with remarkable efficiency. Depurination of 28S RNA Ricin inactivates eukaryotic ribosomes by depurinating a specific adenine residue, A4324, in the 28S ribosomal RNA, preventing protein synthesis, targeting 60S subunit. It targets the 60S subunit of ribosomes, affecting the elongation step of protein synthesis. The A chain, also known as RTA, possesses enzymatic activity, it acts as an N-glycosidase, cleaving an adenine residue from the ribosomal RNA, which is crucial for ribosomal function. On the other hand, the B-chain, or RTB, binds to cell surface receptors, facilitating endocytosis and enabling the entry of the toxin into the cell. After binding to cell surface receptors, ricin is endocytosed and transported retrogradely through the Golgi apparatus to the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER. In the ER, the disulfide bond linking the A and B chains is reduced, allowing the A chain to translocate into the cytosol where it exerts its toxic effect. Ricin induces apoptosis in addition to inhibiting protein synthesis contributing to cell death. This apoptotic pathway involves several cellular mechanisms, including mitochondrial dysfunction and activation of caspases. The toxin also disrupts multiple metabolic processes, including those in the Krebs cycle, further contributing to its cytotoxicity. Ricin's interference with cellular metabolism leads to an energy crisis within the cell, exacerbating its toxic effects. Membrane damage. Ricin can also damage cellular membranes, leading to loss of cell integrity and further promoting cell death. This membrane disruption is secondary to the primary ribosomal inactivation but adds to the overall cytotoxic impact. Inflammatory response. The toxin triggers a robust inflammatory response. The immune system's reaction to the presence of ricin can cause additional tissue damage and contribute to the overall severity of ricin poisoning. Immune system modulation. Ricin has been shown to modulate the immune system, affecting both innate and adaptive immune responses. This modulation can lead to impaired immune function, making the organism more susceptible to secondary infections. Roots of exposure. Exposure to ricin can occur through inhalation, ingestion, injection, or dermal contact. 
Each route of exposure presents unique symptoms ranging from respiratory distress and pulmonary edema in inhalation to vomiting, diarrhea, and severe dehydration in ingestion. Contact with ricin can cause skin and eye irritation, and injection can lead to organ failure and death. Clinical manifestations of ricin poisoning vary depending on the route of exposure. When inhaled, ricin can cause severe respiratory distress, fever, cough, and pulmonary edema, which may lead to respiratory failure. If ingested, it results in severe gastrointestinal symptoms like vomiting and bloody diarrhea, which can cause dehydration and multi-organ failure. Dermal contact mainly causes skin and eye irritation, while injection can lead to localized muscle and lymph node failure, and potentially widespread organ failure and death. Additionally, inhalation might also result in bronchitis and acute lung injury, and ingestion can lead to gastrointestinal hemorrhage and severe metabolic disturbances. In the event of ricin exposure, immediate steps must be taken to manage the situation effectively. First and foremost, remove the patient from the source of exposure to prevent further ingestion or inhalation of the toxin. It's crucial to ensure that the patient's airway remains clear. Medical personnel should avoid inducing vomiting but may consider administering activated charcoal if the ingestion is recent and the airway is secure. Recent guidelines also emphasize the importance of immediate airway management and recommend the use of activated charcoal for recent ingestions. Long-term management of ricin poisoning emphasizes supportive care due to the absence of a specific antidote. Continuous monitoring in a healthcare facility is crucial, especially for managing systemic symptoms and preventing complications. Aggressive intravenous fluid and electrolyte replacement are recommended to maintain hydration and support vital functions. Additionally, blood pressure and seizure activities should be closely monitored, with appropriate medications administered as needed. Long-term care involves aggressive fluid replacement and continuous monitoring of renal and hepatic functions to prevent organ failure. Preventive strategies are critical, especially in high-risk scenarios. Development of vaccines like Rivax, which has shown promise in preclinical studies, could provide active immunity against ricin exposure. Additionally, ongoing research into ricin inhibitors and the development of protective protocols can significantly reduce the risk of severe outcomes following exposure. Ensuring the availability of comprehensive protective measures and educating at-risk populations are vital components of public health preparedness. Ongoing research into vaccines like Revax and other ricin inhibitors aims to provide robust preventive measures, significantly enhancing public health preparedness against potential bioterrorism threats. Through our comprehensive exploration, the dangers and complexities of ricin poisoning have been laid bare, underscoring not only the immediate threat posed by exposure, but also the critical measures required for management and mitigation. The journey from understanding the toxicological profile of ricin to navigating the clinical manifestations and identifying the urgent need for effective emergency responses showcases the essential knowledge healthcare professionals must possess. Equally important is the emphasis on the absence of a specific antidote which places a significant weight on the shoulders of symptomatic treatment and supportive care as primary measures to counteract the effects of ricin poisoning. Reflecting on the presented discussions, the paramount importance of preparedness and proper management in the face of ricin exposure cannot be overstated. As we consider the potential for future advancements, including the development of specific treatments and preventive strategies such as vaccines, the collective aim remains clear to safeguard public health and enhance the resilience of our healthcare systems against this potent threat. By fostering an informed and vigilant community, equipped with the knowledge and tools to respond effectively to ricin poisoning, we can significantly diminish its impact and ensure a stronger, more secure society. What happens during ricin poisoning? During ricin poisoning, the toxin inhibits protein synthesis within cells, leading to cell death. Initial symptoms vary depending on the route of exposure, ingestion, inhalation, or injection, and can include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, 
severe abdominal pain, difficulty breathing, and organ failure. Without prompt treatment, ricin poisoning can result in severe organ damage and death. Can you be saved from ricin poisoning? Survival from ricin poisoning depends on the dose and route of exposure, as well as the promptness and effectiveness of medical treatment. There is no specific antidote for ricin, so treatment focuses on supportive care to manage symptoms and maintain vital functions. This includes intravenous fluids, medications to manage pain and symptoms, and respiratory support if needed. Who has been killed by ricin? Survival from ricin poisoning depends on the dose and route of exposure, as well as the promptness and effectiveness of medical treatment. There is no specific antidote for ricin, so treatment focuses on supportive care to manage symptoms and maintain vital functions. This includes intravenous fluids, medications to manage pain and symptoms, and respiratory support if needed. What foods contain ricin? Ricin is found in the seeds of the castor oil plant, Ricinus communis. The castor bean itself contains ricin, and while castor oil is processed to remove the toxin, the raw beans are highly toxic if chewed or swallowed. No other common foods contain ricin, making the castor bean the primary source of this toxin. What are the methods for neutralizing ricin? Research has shown that targeting parts of the ricin toxin, specifically RTA, RTB, or the interface between RTA and RTB, can effectively neutralize the toxin. There are several anti-ricin recombinant humanized monoclonal antibodies, MABs, that have proven effective and may be used for prophylactic or therapeutic purposes in cases of ricin poisoning. Thanks for watching Medical Toxicology. Take care.